This is a model for monitoring chronic heart failure and also for predicting problems of survival if heart surgery treatment is required. So the rough idea behind this is that there are various risk factors up here, some of which, like smoking, poor diet, and in particular family history of heart failure, impact on the seriousness of the condition. So you can think of that as being the classic risk indicator. The seriousness of the condition will largely determine what kind of symptoms a person will have, and also whether or not a diagnostic test result will show blockages, etc. And if you do see blockages, there would normally be a recommendation for the treatment. Because whether or not a patient survives treatment depends not just on the seriousness of the condition, but also on their natural survivability, which is all about their age and fitness. So think of these things as variables that aren't usually directly observed. Let's consider a patient in the age range 51 to 70. We're going to look at some of the classic risk factors. Suppose they're a smoker. We want to see what the impact of that is on the risk, serious as the condition. Probability is very high at the start here is 1.061. So now we know this patient's age and they're a smoker, that's gone up a bit. If we know they also have a poor diet, it goes up a bit again, not a major difference. But if we find out that there is a history of heart failure in the family, that makes a fair bit of difference. Still nothing particularly to worry about, but if we now discover that this patient is suffering major symptoms, for example angina symptoms, that type of thing, then this patient is high risk. You might send them for a diagnostic test, and if you do find major blockage, then there will be a recommendation to treat. Let's suppose that this patient is treated and that they survive. Then what's going to happen is that we're going to learn something about this patient's natural survivability and also about the seriousness of the condition because of that. So that does indeed tell us something about these things. Those things have changed, which means that if we want to answer the counterfactual question, would this patient still have survived if they hadn't got treatment, we're going to have to use all of the information we've learned here in the counterfactual world. So what we need to do now is to make a copy of these two nodes. So let's do a copy and paste them over here to create our counterfactual world. But in the counterfactual world, we have to break the link into treatment. Clear that observation. And clear that. And what we're going to do now is ask the question, well, what's the probability this patient would have survived if they had not had treatment? So we're going to run the model. And look at the result. There's just under a 79% chance this patient would have survived if they hadn't had treatment. We can also see if there's going to be any change if this patient, for example, hadn't been a smoker. Makes very little change. It's gone up to, yeah, it's gone up to 79% chance of survival. If they hadn't had a poor diet, it's going up. And what about if they'd exercised a lot? It's also pushing up, so all of these things would also have made a difference. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the many others that you'll find on my YouTube and Rumble channels. Goodbye.